it's me, G. And in this video, I'll be teaching you a few ways on how to get started with PNG tubing. I'll be going over a few methods and programs to get you started, and primarily be using the OBS Studio as my streaming program of choice. But you should be able to easily fit these steps into your Streamlabs OBS program if you want. There is a lot to get through, so get ready to be tutorialed. First things first, your model. It's going to be the most important part of this journey, so you're going to want to put some care and thought into what you want your PNG tuber or GIF tuber to look and feel like. There are tons of art programs out there for those who want to be creative and make their own PNG or GIF model from scratch, both paid and free. Here are a few free programs that I know of to help get you started if you want to go this route. There's also a multitude of different options without the need of fancy art programs, like PicCrew is an amazing option to get a PNG tube model or inspiration if you feel like creating your own. And whenever you are making your PNG or GIF tubing model, just make sure that you have a option for whenever they're talking and whenever they're not talking. Oh, right, I guess I better look the part. One sec. In this video, I'm going to be going over four different types of PNG tubing software. Discord Stream Kit Overlay, Discord Reactive Images, PNG Tubi, and Vito Tube Mini. This first option I wanna talk about is an older one, but it still gets the job done. This is what I like to call the Discord Stream Kit Overlay method. You will need Discord, so if you don't have Discord, you will need to get it. I highly suggest making these private channels or just making a whole new Discord for this purpose. Once your Discord is set up, just upload your images into the text channel of your Discord server. Now we're gonna go to the website streamkit.discord.com overlay. On here, you want to click install for OBS and then go to voice widget. What you're going to do is you're going to plug in your server using this little drop down menu here and finding your server name and doing the same for the voice channel that you will be recording in. You can also mess with these settings here, but we're not gonna mess with those too much. We really only want to focus on this section over here where it says browser source. This right here, copy this link and then we're going to head over to OBS. Once you're over here in your OBS, just hit the plus icon and then click browser source. Once this window opens up, all you want to do is paste that URL section into here. Now, after you've pasted that link, you're going to need some CSS code for this section down here where it says custom CSS. Select all of this and you're going to enter in this code. Ta-da! I know this looks intimidating, but don't be too alarmed with this string of text. It's actually easier than it looks. The real important items that you're going to be focusing on is the data react ID, content URL, and the second content URL. Once here, you're going to have to go back to your Discord, and from Discord, you're going to select your image and copy ID. If you don't have this option, you will have to adjust your settings and turn on developer mode within the Discord settings. Go back to OBS, and where it says React ID, just paste that there. Now we're going to get the image for our closed mouth. Head back over to Discord and kind of do the same thing. Right click on the image with the mouth closed, copy link, and then go back to your OBS and paste this in here. Then you want to scroll down all the way to the open mouth section, go back to Discord, do the same thing you did for the closed mouth, and plug that in. Once all that's set, just hit OK. And there you go! You have a talking bouncing you! Hello! I am a tiny flame! How are you? And I kind of like this dude, so we're going to keep using him for now. This next method I like to call the Discord Reactive Images method. This one is similar to the Discord Stream Kit, but it is a little different. It also kind of says that on their website as well. To begin, you want to be going to this website here, discordreactiveimages.fuji.tech. Once here, you're going to head over to the login and then click Authorize. Once you hit Authorize, it's going to bring you to this screen. What you want to do is find your image by clicking the little camera icon right here and plugging your images into the section corresponding to what it says. Once you have your images set, hit Save. As you can see, as soon as we hit Save, the images stop moving. This method unfortunately does not work with GIF files, so you will have to resort to only having stills for this one. Once you have your images set, you could go over here and adjust these settings right here if you want your image to bounce or not. Once you have all your settings set, hit apply. I hit it just because it makes me feel good. And you're going to copy this section right here. This is going to be your individual browser source for your Discord. It works the exact same way as the previous method, just it makes it a lot easier and you don't have to worry about all the coding yourself. If you were to have a bunch of other people within the call with you, 
then you could also adjust their settings using this little cogwheel and do kind of the same thing you did for yourself. That's partially why these options are here, is for if you want to have collabs with a giant group. And instead of using all of these individually, you can just use this giant group one and it'll put them all together. Once you're all set and you've copied that source, you're going to head back over to OBS and you're going to make another browser source. Once here, all you have to do is click this, control V, then hit OK. And there you go, you have a little PNG tuber model. This is by far the easiest way to get set up. And to keep things consistent, we're going to keep this little guy down here in the corner. The next method on the list is called the PNG tuber method. First things first, head to the link github.com slash derppetty slash PNG tuber. Once here, you're gonna be greeted with this screen. You really wanna focus on this panel over here where it says animation release and click that. Once you click that, you're going to be greeted with this screen and then you just wanna download the PNG to be zip. Once you download the zip file, extract it. Make sure that it extracts into its own folder. This will not work if you extract it in any other folder. Double click the folder and you'll notice a few items within this folder. The only ones we're going to be focusing on are these right here, the index, Sprite closed, Sprite open, Sprite open big, and Sprite open small. For this to work, you're going to replace these four images with images of your own. However, you do have to make sure that the naming convention and file type are the same. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna paste the ones that I have already made. Now we head over to the index, double click that, and it'll take you to this screen here. Just hit allow for your microphone, and there you go, you start talking. You can adjust your mic cutoff threshold over here, you also have the option for normal sprite and animated sprite, which is why we have that extra bit of PNGs. You can also adjust the brightness setting, say if you want it really dark whenever your mouth is closed. You can also adjust the background here from green to blue to Mayanta. But we're gonna keep it green for now to keep it consistent. Now that that's done, we're gonna head over to our OBS studio. Once you're in OBS studio and you're going to do a window capture. Once you're in your window capture settings, Make sure to change the window to reactive PNGs in Chrome. Make sure to set the window match priority to window title must match. This way it only tries to find the PNG to me software. Once you have all the settings you prefer and like, just hit OK. And there you go. We have our little thing set up and going. However, you can kind of see that there's a lot of junk space everywhere. We don't want all this. So what you can do, hold Alt and then crop this up. You'll know that you're cropping it whenever you see this lime green color line as you drag it around. Once you're done, you can see we still have this green stuff, but don't worry, we're gonna fix that too. What you do is you head over to PNG Tubi, right click it and go to filters. Whenever you're in the filter section, hit the plus icon here. Then you wanna head over to chroma key and click that. Once here, you'll notice that we lost all the green screen. However, you can kind of see through my little flame. But if you like that effect, cool. But if you don't like that effect, you can always adjust the similarity right here. There we go. I kind of like that setting. And you can also adjust it for any other color too. So if you have blue, mayenta, or any custom color you feel like. So hit close, and there you go. We now have our little PNG tubey character talking. Hello, look at me. I'm a little flame. And just to keep things consistent, we'll keep this little guy down here for now. This next piece of software that I want to talk about is the one I am most excited for and kind of the reason I wanted to make this tutorial. This is called the Vito Tube Mini Method. First things first, you're going to head over to this website, olmiwi.itch.io slash Tube Mini. Once you get to this site, you're going to be greeted with this screen here. What you want to do is scroll down until you see this button right here. You're going to click download now. Don't be alarmed, this is just a donation window. You do not have to pay for this if you can't or don't want to. You can say, no thanks, just take me to the window downloads and get through this just fine. However, I will probably be back later because this developer definitely deserves something for this program. Once here, you're going to see a few downloads. Just download the one that corresponds with you. Once you have your VitoTube mini file downloaded, what you're gonna do is extract it. Once extracted, open up the folder. You wanna open up your folders until you see this icon right here. This is the application we're going to be using. So what you want to do is double click this. And then whenever it loads, you'll be greeted with this screen here. You'll notice there's a ton of options within this program. You have your mic adjustments here. You have your mic device here. You can also change the background color by toggling from blue to pink to even transparent. So you don't have to worry about doing any filters or any extra bits afterwards. You also have a bunch of different options for your models up here, such as closed mouth image, open mouth image, 
closed mouth blinking image and open mouth blinking image. Because as you can see, the model sometimes closes its eyes. So if you don't have a GIF image, this is a good way to get around it. You can also adjust its motion whenever it's idle or open, and also a transition effect for whenever it is opening and closing its mouth. You also have hotkey options here, as well as a toggle for the hotkey. You also have different states over here, which are technically like different emotions. So if I wanted to create a state, and I wanted to make this more of an angry deer, all I would have to do is just add a bit of a shaking whenever I talk, and there you go! I now shake whenever I talk, so it's almost like I'm angry. And I can always go back and go back to normal if I want to. You can kind of see how much freedom you have to make whatever you want and be as creative as you want with these. But for right now, I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to import my own model that I have prepared for this. I'm going to remove these images, because I do not need the blinking images, and I'm going to go find these two, so I'll be right back. And there we go! As you can see, this program does support GIF files, so you don't have to be limited to just stills. And I also prepared another state, and now I'm an angry fire. But I want to make sure that he's a little bit more angry, so we're going to add a shake effect. And there you go! I'm a very angry flame! But I want to be able to change between these two, and that's where the hotkeys come in. So I'm going to set a hotkey for my neutral, make sure that your neutral is selected, hit the hotkey option, and I'm going to hit 7 just to make it simple. That hotkey icon turned blue, so now this has the number 7 set to its state. We're going to go over to the angry one, and we're going to do the same thing, only instead of 7, we're going to select 8. Now I have a hotkey number set to 8. Now I'm happy, now I'm mad. Simple as that. And another good thing about this program, if you have a model that you've worked on and you have all these different states and all these different looks, all you have to do is hit this little save icon and it'll save it as a Vito mini file, which kind of acts the same way as Vroid Studio does with its 3D models in saving things as a VRM for VC face. And you can upload it at any time. So if you have a ton of different models that you want to choose from, this program makes it extremely easy to keep all of your models organized as well as giving you the creative freedom to make your own and more unique models. I highly suggest you give this program a try, as it isn't very taxing on your computer, it is lightweight, and it also gives you a lot more customizability. I really hope this developer continues to work on more PNG tubing or even other VTubing software in the future. I would love to see what they get to do next. Now that we have our system set, we're going to head over into our OBS studio. Once you are here, what you're going to do is you're going to hit Add, Game Capture. Once you're in the Game Capture window, go to Mode, select Capture Specific Window, go to Window, and find the Vito 2 Mini program. And don't be alarmed by the gray, we do not have to crop anything. All you have to do is hit Allow Transparency, and there you go. Completely done. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Your character's right there, all ready to go, ready for PNG tubing action. Hello, I am a tiny flame. But I'm also a mad fling! Rah. And these are some of the easier ways that you can go about getting started with PNG tubing or GIF tubing without too much of a hassle. There's also a tutorial out there for using OBS Studio plugins. Steve Dower did a really good job of doing a tutorial on this, so I'm going to put a link up here and in the description below so that you can go check out his channel in case you want to give that a try. So we may even see some OBS integration in the future to make this even easier. Like with any technology, these tips and tutorials may fade into obscurity at some point. I would like to say again, the Vito 2 mini method is still my absolute favorite, but give some of these other options a try. Whether they're obsolete or not, they still work. I hope that you enjoyed watching and got some inspiration or ideas to get started on your own PNG or GIF tubing journey. If you really liked this tutorial and it helped you out, let me know in the comments below. And consider liking and subscribing, as this helps me out as well. And if you'd like, go check us out on Twitch, where I play games and sometimes do art. Link up top and in the description below. I do want to give a big thank you if you decided to watch till the end. And I also want to give a big thank you to everyone scrolling on the screen, as they have been supporting me throughout Twitch and my YouTube journey. Thank you all so much, and I hope to see you again soon! BBFN! Bye bye for now.